esports competition is grueling and can wear down even the best pro players. But fans don't only want to watch players compete, they want to care about them too. And I made it my goal. I wanted people to recognize me. I wanted people to know like, hey, this that's Nate Shot, dude, that, that's Nate Shot. And nowhere was the balance between high-level competitor and internet personality better realized than in a young kid from Chicago. It's a how the fuck you doing? His name is Matthew Nadeshot Haig, and he's one of esports' biggest stars. This is his story. Can he pick up the kill? Yeah, he does! Nadeshot with a huge, huge play there! Unbelievable play! One of the most influential players in the history of competitive Call of Duty actually started off hating the game. The first experience I had with Call of Duty was COD 2, and that was when I first got my Xbox 360. I put the game in, and I literally got spawn trapped for the next five minutes, and I never played it after that. I absolutely hated it because of that one experience. But though he didn't fall in love with COD 2, he loved gaming so much that his mom made him get a job at McDonald's just to get him away from the screen. I think when any parent sees their child doing something that's really out of the ordinary, you know, that's going to raise a lot of red flags. So I can imagine what they thought about it, and I think that's the main reason why my mom made me get a job because she was worried that I was just going to waste my life away behind my, my computer screen. Like eight hours a day. Eight to ten hours a day, we would just grind, search and destroy public playlists because that was what was fun for us. Seeking greater competition, Nate Shot and his friends went to Game Battles, a platform that would land him his first big break. There, he met Merc, and the two were approached by Optic Nerve during Modern Warfare 2. Nerve offered the two gamers a chance to build an Optic roster. Since 2009, Optic Gaming were committed to creating video content. While they were going back to the organization's roots by fielding a competitive roster, the entertainment side of the industry was their focus. Even at this early point in the team's history, there were hints that the route to popularity didn't have to rely on tournament results. Fans could be earned online and introduced to competition, while esports fans could find more to like about these competitors on YouTube. And Hex would eventually bring Nadeshot around to the optic way of thinking. Content, daily whenever possible, was the path to a dedicated following. I met him when he was a lot younger, um, but very pleasant. Just smiles all around, uh, fun guy to be around, to, to talk to, and that was the first time I actually had ever met I think a pro player before. So I was kind of just taken back of like, what, what is this relationship dynamic? Though they managed to defeat heavyweights Team Envious at Dallas, Optic finished eighth. And while they still received strong fan support, not long after the event, Hex called Nate Shot and told him that the rest of the team wanted him gone. At the time, Hector convinced Nade to continue with content creation and to stay on with Optic in that role. In Nadeshot, he saw a rare combination. Even though he wasn't naturally comfortable in front of a camera, he was a strong competitor, but also someone approachable that fans could identify with. Nade told his fans that he was no longer with the team, and although he said it was a voluntary move, he later admitted that it had been a crushing experience. In terms of competition, it wasn't clear when or even if Nade would return, but he threw himself into the business of content creation despite still having school and a part-time job. Anytime that I was at home, I was playing Call of Duty or working on content production for my YouTube channel or my live stream. Nice job, keep it up, keep it up. That drive showed Hex that his investment in Nade might still pay off. And when the competitive team needed a replacement for Rambo at MLG Dallas 2011, Nadeshot got the call. And obviously I haven't played in a while, so I'm, uh, I'm curious to see what happens. After helping the team place third, Nadeshot went back to creating content. But Hex could see the competitive fire still burning in Nadeshot's eyes, and created a second Optic team called Optic Nation for him to run. Though that team had limited competitive success, Hex saw that Nadeshot's content was doing something different. Nadeshot understood it too, as he consistently produced content that bridged the gap between the esports and gaming audience by offering a glimpse into his personal life. Well, uh, this gameplay is gonna wrap up. I kicked the shit out of my brother. He's older than me. Uh, he was pretty pissed because I got Kyle Quava and the Chicago Bulls and Dak Rose. You two, how the fuck you doing? Hey guys, it's Nate Shot, and uh, I'm doing a vlog for my iPad that I actually got for my birthday. My grandparents got it for me. I hope you guys can't hear these dogs in the background because they are loud as hell. All right, go ahead. You two, how the fuck? How are you doing? Merry Christmas.
From Nate Chap, grandfather. With his subscriber base on YouTube continuing to grow, Nate Shot announced that he had finally quit his job at McDonald's. He was all in on Call of Duty. In June 2011, Optic Nation placed sixth at MLG Columbus while the main Optic Gaming squad took first. But Nade saw a shot at glory with another team and briefly joined Envy for MLG Anaheim and MLG Rally. After a couple of events with Envy, Nade Shot finally had another chance on Optic's main roster at the biggest Call of Duty event yet. COD XP 2011. Featuring a million dollar prize pool and a post-tournament performance by Kanye West, it was Activision's first big step into figuring out COD esports. The tournament may not have had the most competitive field, and it featured Modern Warfare 3, a game that wasn't even out yet. But with Nade Shot, Optic won, again raising questions about why he was sidelined when both his skill and popularity could be better harnessed by the organization. But he stepped back down, restarted Optic Nation, and waited. He waited for over a year, during which he played with a number of mixed teams, none of which had wins at any major event. However uneventful 2012 was in Nade Shot's career, it was the year in which he would suffer his most significant loss. Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, Nade Shot from Optic Gaming, and some of you may have heard uh, in the past couple days on Twitter, if you follow me or anybody else, that my mom actually passed away at the age of 47 on Saturday night. Uh, she died in her sleep. That's kind of a gruesome detail, but just want to let you guys know that I I'm truly am thankful for all the support that you've shown me on Twitter and all my social media outlets like Facebook. Nate Shot's mother, Christina, had sometimes criticized his gaming, but in time came to support his esports dream. I think she would be approved now, uh, for sure. I think things have kind of taken off to a point where she wouldn't have a choice at this point. I mean, uh, just the things that I've been able to do for my family and the things that I've been able to do for myself and my career, I think she would completely understand it. While Nate Shot's 2012 had been tumultuous, Optic had been experiencing one of its most successful periods in Call of Duty, dominating Modern Warfare 3 with up-and-coming star Scump. But Nade Shot wasn't satisfied with watching the team's success from the sidelines, so he convinced Hex and the team to add him as a starter in place of Rambo. I convinced them to let me back on the team. So like, it was, it was my time to shine. I had all this pressure on my shoulders because nobody really agreed with the roster move. They did not want to see Rambo off the team, but for me, like, this was me trying to come into my own. With Nade Shot in the lineup, Optic headed to UMG Chicago for the first ever LAN event on the recently released Call Call of Duty Black Ops 2. We were either going to be so incredibly successful and shock the world, or I was going to be like the laughing stock of like the competitive community. In spite of the pressure, Nade Shot rose to the occasion, and the team found themselves in the grand finals against an Aix led complexity. That was the biggest rivalry for us, dude. Aix always kicked optics ass for whatever reason he just always beat us he was just talking so much shit before this match even started like we're sitting on main stage and this dude is just doing what he does best and he's trying to get into everybody's head and i was just so focused on winning the match that i really wasn't you know getting in on it but nade shot and optic would have the last laugh this time and the fallout from their triumph got a little heated all comes down to this and we see nade shot gets taken out big t gets a kill on crimson though it's a three on three situation now big timer looking through and an AX picks up a kill on Merc and it's throughout and huge play, big time makes a big kill. And now Scum picks up on AX and it's a 1v2 and then TP is stuck in the corner and it's going to be all up to this. And they have position on this, this is it! And this is it! This is it! We do have it's the Optic! Winning. Nade Shot and Aix already had a history, but this incident would escalate their rivalry to the next level. This is like a cringy and embarrassing video, but it like set off like the entirety of the success that Call of Duty had, man. Like, I'm cringing watching myself, but this was just like a moment that I'll never forget. As 2013 began, Nade Shot finally signed with Red Bull after over a year of speculation regarding a deal. Probably the most humbling experience of my life. For me, this is kind of something that was a dream come true. It marked not just a landmark moment in Nade's career, but for Call of Duty Esports as a whole. Although Optic managed to beat Aix and Complexity again at the Call of Duty Championship, a disappointing third place finish marked the beginning of a majorless slump for the team in 2013. But Optic was changing, 
they added a gaming house in Chicago and continued to grow in popularity despite their lack of first place finishes. Even when the results weren't there, the content was. If you enjoyed it, make sure you click the like button, favorite it if you really enjoyed it, comment, let me know what you saw the video, and any constructive criticism always helps bro, me you out. Stop asking for likes, bro? Yeah, just exit the video. Don't like stop shit. asking for likes, bro. Nade Shot, now living in a team house and fully immersed in Call of Duty, took a moment to reflect on how big this opportunity really was. And this is something that I've always really I I've I've always wanted. And uh you know, my mom my mom, uh, my, my mom never really saw it going anywhere, and she, she really worried about me. She really worried for me. Uh, if, if this was going to work out, if this was gonna, if I was kind of screwing my own life up by quitting school, um, but I always saw school as something like it's always going to be there, and it's always going to be my backup plan. So the fact that all this has worked out so far, and it's the growth has continued. Uh, I really do, I really do appreciate it, guys. A few months later, JCAP replaced Merck, and the team finished second at the MLG Fall Invitational, Optic's best placement since UMG Chicago, with Aches playing foil to Nate Shot's hopes in a backbreaking comeback. All the pressure's on JCAP here. Aches playing it perfectly. Don't engage. Make him go for the plant. Now Aches knows he needs to go. Is he too late in transition to catch the carrier? JCAP, uh -oh, did he, he get away? Him. The Ninja J-Cap here is going to come down to one final fight. Oh, Ace finds and picks up the kill. Ace with the 1v2 clutch. Complexity winning their fourth oh. straight round. Ace will let him know about that one. Follows up Crim6 is 1v3 with a 1v2. 2013 had shown Optic that the demands of both competition and content creation could take their toll on players that were unprepared but Nade Shot had always been able to satisfy both sides of that equation. Still, Hex acknowledged that the situation must have been frustrating. 2014 would be the year of Call of Duty Ghosts, a polarizing game within the esports scene that ultimately led to a roster shakeup on Optic. The team would keep Nade and Skump, but add Clayster and Proofy. However, despite the lineup changes, it would end up being a year Optic fans would prefer to forget. Although the two had arguments in the past, an incident early in the year saw Nadeshot and Skump butt heads, with Skump actually issuing an ultimatum to the team. Get rid of Nade, or he would leave and go to Team Envious. He basically thought that I was the reason uh, why we couldn't win. Uh, he, he just wasn't a fan of me, he didn't like me anymore. Nadeshot actually went to Hex and offered to step down, saying that Skump was the better player and deserved the spot. But given the way Skump had approached the situation, Hex decided to keep Nadeshot. It would work out as Skump quickly asked to come back. After a disappointing start to the year, the team again managed a third place finish at the Call of Duty Championship. Once again, they lost a close, important series to Complexity. And that is a 6-0 finish for Complexity! Morale wasn't great as the year continued, but Nadeshot wasn't giving up. Invited to participate at the MLG X Games Invitational, the team had an important chance to get on the board against some of their biggest rivals. Going into that tournament, I, I thought that we were we could either place top three or we were gonna get dead last. It was an invitational tournament. There was eight teams, you know, practicing and, and scrim stress prior to the event were very up in the air in terms of the results, we it was just really inconsistent. The former Complexity roster that included Aches signed with Evil Geniuses right before the event. And truthfully, I, I'm a pretty realistic person, a little bit of a pessimist, so I was thinking like the worst was coming. Um, and then all of a sudden we came out of the gate swinging. And Proofy and Nate Shot in a two on two against Crim6 and Karma. Nate Shot does win that gunfight against Crim6. That's going to leave Karma in a one versus two. Bomb is down at that A site. Oh. Nate Shot peeks up. Believe that. played that so well. He can't. And uh -oh. Crim6 is right next to a player. And he gets oh. turned. Nate Shot picks up the kill. That's going to extend him to A1. Now Karma in a one versus two. Proofy and Nate Shot still up for optic. Karma. He's in that B site. And that bomb is down, most importantly. Yep. He is running out of time. He knows it. He is done. Nature extends it to 9 and 1. And he's getting pumped up. Nature with a big defensive stand. They have those two flags. They just need to try and waste some time. Nature's going to clean up another kill on B. There's one player pushing behind as well as that, though. Optic have someone on A. And with 20 seconds left, Optic Gaming have done what was the impossible. They have taken down EG. After defeating EG, Optic defeated Team Caliber in the finals to earn a gold medal. Goonjar, I have them highlighted on your mini map. Goon about to get cleaned up from behind. Yeah, Nate shots a peacock. You gotta let him fly sometimes, man. He gets those kills. Go for the ace. He's got the ace. 
Oh, and he oh. gets the ace! He's gotta get the kill. Gujar's gotta find Clayster. Clayster's gonna look. And, and he gets Clay. the kill! And Optic Gaming wins it! Optic Gaming! Your X Games gold medal champion. What a performance here from Optic. There was no prize pool and it was an invitational tournament, but Optic had found a victory in the middle of a difficult competitive season. I don't know. I feel like I'm about to tear up. It's my first MLG event that I ever won. I'm so happy that I won it with these guys. Ever since I watched Halo 2 as a young kid on MLG, I dreamed about winning an MLG event. And for, for this to finally happen, plus a gold medal at the X Games, it's, it's literally a dream come true. Sadly, this would be the high point for the team's year. And as the team continued to struggle, Nadeshot increasingly became the subject of controversy. As the team went to a Red Bull-sponsored training camp, Nadeshot and Skump were already looking for a replacement for Proofy. The answer would be Crim6, and he wanted to add Formal to the team, so Clayster 2 was released. On paper, this roster was poised to take the 2015 Call of Duty Advanced Warfare season by storm. The fresh game was a boon for Nadeshot. The team got off to a strong start. They earned first at UMG Orlando and the regular season of the MLG Pro League Season 1. They won the playoffs too, and went on to dominate the COD Championship NA Regional Finals. But while the team was doing well, Nade felt like his play was deteriorating. His reactions weren't enough to carry him through matches. And when Optic finished 7th at COD Champs after their hot start, Nadeshot knew it would be his last event. And I felt like my passion to win just wasn't high enough uh, to continue to compete at this level. And so, to give you guys kind of a mindset of what's been going through my head, I just felt like I was playing to not lose. I wasn't really playing to win, so that I wouldn't have to hear about losing the repercussions of it on Twitter and on my YouTube channel the week after. I was just so immensely afraid of the fact that nobody would want to kind of watch my streams or my videos because I didn't have that role in Optic Gaming anymore. And, and that, that is something that definitely kind of hindered me from making that decision a little sooner. Three years of streaming, YouTube content, and competition had pushed him to his limit. But the comments blaming him for the team's woes became overwhelming. I'm a pretty self-conscious person. And with all these people being so hypercritical about the way that I play and my role in that team, it got to me, man, and I've got pretty thick skin, but I just didn't want to be the scapegoat anymore. In hindsight, it's surprising that he managed to juggle all these responsibilities for as long as he did. And given the demands of esports competition today, it's unlikely that we'll ever see it happen at his level again. What you might see is players saying, hey, I don't want to figure out the balance. I either want to be full-blown competition and dabble a little bit, or I want to be full-blown content. And maybe not, you can't just dabble in competition, right? You have to really, really focus. So I think that fork in the road is gonna cause decisions, but for the players that can maintain both, more, more power to them. It, but it, it's tough, it is tough to do. Nadeshot has since created his own organization, 100 Thieves. In 2017, it was revealed that 100 Thieves had secured a spot in the newly franchised NALCS and had backing from Dan Gilbert, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. In their first NALCS split, 100 Thieves placed first in the regular season, and Nadeshot was with the team every step of the way. I'm so happy to be a part of these guys' careers, and our team is awesome, and I want to scream it from the mountaintops. Call of Duty gave him his first big break, but it didn't define him. And even now, as he cheers on the team that he both manages and owns, it's obvious that one of esports' biggest stars is still that kid from Chicago. But that's it. Uh, YouTube. We'll see you fucking later. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.